Welcome to Building 72, the podcast brought to you by the Entertainment Arts and Engineering Program at the University of Utah. Thank you for joining your hosts, Adam Hunter and Corinne Lewis, to talk about the video game industry and, you know, probably other stuff. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Building 72. I am so excited today. Um, I'm kind of always excited, though, about this. No, but this, this one's like the nerdiest of the nerdies, given the three of us. So. I know. Well, g- given my love of Harry Potter. <laughs> I was more talking about the writing aspect, but that's fine, too. <laughs> So everybody, welcome. Um, today we have one of my just dearest students of all time, Cade Johnson. Um, Cade, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about what you're doing and how you got started in games? Uh, yes. Thank you, Corinne. Thanks, Adam. Uh, I'm Cade Johnson. I am uh, an associate writer at Avalanche Software slash Warner Brothers Games working at, on uh, Hogwarts Legacy. And Games has been an interesting experience in my life. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I got started with Corinne actually. So Corinne, in um, when I was a, a undergrad student in college, and about at the University of Utah um, in 2012, I took her introduction to video games and virtual worlds class, and that kind of just, you know, was was it that that introduced me to this. I mean, I'd always loved games as a kid. I'd, it's always been my, one of my favorite things. And taking that class kind of just was like, oh, well, this is what I'm going to do. I didn't ever really think of this as a career before. You know, and in those days, it was pretty, it was pretty new for colleges and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And, you know, having this, having this in those days, I sound like I'm an old man. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we're all aging pretty <laughs> rapidly right now. <laughs> um, well, you know what I remember, Cade, is that... Um, when you came into class, you ha- came in with this huge knowledge of m- movies. And so, and I, and you were getting the film degree. And I, yep. think, I remember us kind of having a conversation about like, is games, like, could I do this games? I never even thought that games would be a thing, but I love games mm-hmm. as much as I love movies. And here we are. Yeah. And it's, I didn't expect to be here, honestly, where I am. You know, I, I, as I said, I started with with your class and then decided to go into the, the the undergraduate program back when it was just an emphasis and you know in the film program, um, and then moved on to the grad program and then moved here and I it it just kind of it was kind of a dream come true honestly it kind of just happened and it, and, it, and so how did writing fit into all that like at what point so you said that the light bulb kind of came on and it was like hey games is is my thing uh was writing right at that moment as well or was it more of like a games is my thing and then after a while it narrowed down I always loved writing I've always loved storytelling you know I in in high school and junior high all those things I would always take the writing classes do do the different writing things but I never you know and I always was interested in writing scripts writing films because I have a big film guy and I had always this kind of hope to to get into film and get into film directing and writing and and that's why I took I decided to do the film the film program at the U um but and I always and I always thought games could be something that uses stories you know that uses stories to their benefit that you know because a lot of the times especially back then and know you know now it's 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 gotten better but back then and before then games were very story phobic I guess <laughs> no. they they you know you had it. you had things here or there you know the exceptions Bioshocks things like that but a lot of them were kind of just you know just kind of throw the story away kill stuff or you know um and I coming f- and seeing things as from a film background I always thought well I I think we can make games in terms of like, not like movies in terms of the way it's presented, but I do like, but, um, but kind of take the stories that we see in films and we see in books that we see in television shows and transfer them to a game space, you know, touching on more important themes than just what games in the past usually touched on. And as I said, they're getting, they're getting up there now. They're, they're, they've changed a little bit, but I don't, I still don't think we've, we've reached that, like that kind of pillar of art like I think games are art, but I don't think we've reached either with respect from people as well as I just don't think it's quite there yet. I in, agree. 
they yeah. haven't reached the golden age of video yeah. game writing yet. <laughs> of storytelling <laughs> and like think about though <laughs> yeah it is it is yeah. you know i mean there's so many genres that films and books and tv shows have that we don't see in movies or mm -hmm. in games excuse me mm -hmm. you know um and games the, the thing i love about games is that they're they're longer experiences and so we can tell longer form stories similar to a book or to a tv show mm -hmm. with more character with you know with more with more everything more of everything yep. and then but then everyone should know that the interaction is the biggest is one of the biggest parts in it is because of you being inter interacting you know with things in a game you're you feel closer to it. You feel closer to the story. You feel closer to the characters, whether it's you playing as yourself or you're playing as a, you know, a specifically detailed character who has their own motivations, their own desires, things like that. And yeah. that's what that's what games are so good at is making well, you mm -hmm. be a part of it. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but no, I, please. I just remember when we first started having these conversations there, you're right. You, you know, narrative was kind of a throwaway mechanic. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like, um, well, that's for the tutorial level and that's about yep. it. And unless we, you know, but people would always point at, well, look, we have really great storytelling in Uncharted and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, um, have you ever seen Uncharted the movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used We're to going to soon. Though. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, I used to show it in class and it, yep. was, it, it just wouldn't, it doesn't hang together in the same way. I mean, that's no. okay. But and, I, I just feel like we're we have moved on from that. I, I'm not having that argument with Bob and Roger anymore about the narrative is not important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 I love those games. You know, I love Uncharted. I love the the cutscene heavy games. Yeah. But it's also, you know, I think we can move. We we we're doing good ways to move past that now, in terms of the different experiences. You know, that could be one experience to have something a little more streamlined if you just want something more akin to a movie but then we also have other experiences that take choice and um you know different types of ways to tell the story yeah including like environmental storytelling or um proceed you know procedural storytelling that stuff kind of stuff and uh it's just come a long way since then so and i think in terms sorry i think in no, terms no. of maturity as well like I always like to think, look back on the story of the first God of War game and then look at the new God of War game. Right. I right. think just like, you know, I just think it's, it. I think that's a great example to show how games have matured in terms of their content and in terms of what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, and I think that's where games are now or are getting a, there. I was talking to a friend of mine who works at Santa Monica and I was like, yeah, I started God of War 4 or 2018. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I expected was like, lessons on fatherhood yep. and like forgiveness and i'm like what is going on here well cory barlog is just you know yeah a lot more going on in his life mm -hmm. now <laughs> mm -hmm. so kate do you you mentioned environmental storytelling which is a relatively new thing at least as far as like video games are concerned mm -hmm. um in your current either position now or in your experience do writers play a big role in environmental storytelling or or is that more from like a designer thing and then they check in with the writers or um that can that can vary that can it, it can vary a little bit um the the level designers are the ones who would would usually set that up they're mm -hmm. the ones that kind of like you know they place everything in the world they make it look that way um but you know we'll we'll always work with them see what they you know see what they have see what it works with us and then um we kind of will we'll craft that story and then they'll usually take that and do with it what they will in the level and then we work with them to kind of tailor it to how we want it um but then you know if we have things like uh notes you know the, the classic gaming finding a note finding things to kind of build on the story where do you will the we're the ones who will write those and decide where you know where what we want them to be what they what part of the story we want them to tell but we'll, we'll we work with those level designers a lot to kind of make those two things cohesive has it been um maybe the word is different than you expected because you're working with a you know working on an ip that is deep and rich from you know from many years of <laughs> books and movies <laughs> it it has it, it you know since as you said it's an ip that we have to we have to check everything we have to know we have to make sure everything is we want to tr stay accurate, so we have to make sure everything works with the world. We have to make sure everything works with the rules. Um, you know, make sure that things don't contradict each other. 
you know, we can't just, and then because it takes place in a different country, mm -hmm. we have to make sure our writing is fits with British dialect, British writing like that. Um, we can't just say, you know, English or uh, American words. And um, it's been, it's, it's difficult, but I, I, it was, well, it was difficult for the first little while, but I kind of, you kind of get used to it. It's just kind of like become yeah. second nature almost. It is like, oh, well, I know that that thing doesn't, doesn't work with the, the rules. I don't know, you know, with the world, things like that. It, it, it's difficult for a while, but you kind of, you kind of get used to it. It's almost, you know, like with characters, you know, you have to create a, a way they speak, but then as you've written that character more and more, you kind of just don't even have to think about it and you just go right back into their mind. Right. I feel like when we can all go to trivia competitions again, I need to come with you and be on your team because you probably have like this level of trivia knowledge about the world of Harry Potter. Now that <laughs> it's <is> unrivaled. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, it's, it's been a great, uh, it's been, it's been a deep dive. I bet. I'll say, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel Kate that, uh, so, so writing in video games is kind of interesting because you mentioned all these other media, right? You mm -hmm. mentioned books and TV shows and movies and everything like that. Um, do you find yourself as a game writer being influenced more by other writers or by other writing in video games? I, I, like, you know what I mean? Like, are you reading when you're like, yeah, I, I really like Hemingway, so I'm going to try and take his mm -hmm. style. And, or is it more of like, I really liked the writing in uncharted so that's something that means a lot to me or or yeah um i i think both actually you know i writing for games and you, and you know this is so different than any other medium because you have to you know you have to write everything specifically to the way things work in the game and so writing to design writing things to fit in with design is so different than you know, because you got to tell the story, but you also have to make it fit in with what the designers want, what the level designers need, everything like that. And you can't, you know, you can't just tell a straight story. You know, you have to fit in with budget. You have to fit in with all that stuff. And and so I think I've taken a lot from other games, just kind of, and, and kind of, you know, been inspired by the way that they've done things. If I'm playing a game and I see the way that they wrote something or the way that they portrayed something, I've like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I could do it like that. I could do it like this. Um, but then other mediums as well, like I, I take a lot of, like, um, I take a lot of uh, inspiration from those as well. You know, I, I, Corinne knows this, I love Stephen King. And so I kind of, uh, and he's always kind of the, a writing idol to me. And so right, I'll... I'm expecting like a part, like at some point, some shining reference. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. really am. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's always been an inspiration to me. And so I, I, I always take any type of writing inspiration from, from any writers. You know, I've been reading um, Neuromancer by William Gibson oh, love to that. get ready for, for cyberpunk. Yeah. And just reading that book has shown me how and taught me a lot of things about world building because I think that book is great at world building. It just throws you in there and it feels real and strange. And just take and just reading that gives me a lot of you know inspiration on how to build worlds and how to you know create a sense of living in a, in in the game or in, in my other writing as well. But in the game, it's helped a lot by just kind of doing that. You know. Have you read Snow Crash? No, I haven't, but it, I've wanted to. Yeah, I've wanted your to. It's on my it. list. <laughs> <laughs> Once your teacher, always your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've got, I, I'm talking a lot. I apologize, Karen. Cool, cool, Adam. Um, I have a, this is not from the student questions. This is straight up my own question. Um, so you work on different properties. You know, we've, we've all worked on things before that are independent. We've all worked on things that are, are licensed before. Mm -hmm. um, with something as as ubiquitous as Harry Potter, Mm -hmm. um or, or the wizarding world let's call it uh oftentimes like if you're making god of war 4 you're making it and you're saying like or god of war 2018 you're making it and you're saying like you know what there's a fair chance that a lot of people are not familiar with the first three gods of war so mm -hmm. we have to we kind of have to craft the story that way is there that concern with something like the mm -hmm. wizarding world of harry potter or is there just kind of the assumption of like you know what 90% of people out there at least understand the basics of, of our world and our rule set and things like that. That's a really good question. I, I mean, I, there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about that that I know of. Um, and I think that what, what makes Harry Potter great is I think that in our, our game is, our game is kind of a new start. And so, and what makes this and Harry Potter great is that it kind of is all 
it works it very familiar to you you know it's 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 a school it's about kids um it's 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 in the real world it's it's all kind of familiar and so even if you don't really know harry potter with our game you're still going to kind of i think understand everything because it's all a little familiar if a, if a little strange you know in this fantastical way but going in there's not really it 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 I'm not afraid of anybody who hasn't played Harry Potter or played, heard any, <laughs> read any Harry Potter books, seen any Harry Potter movies. I don't feel like they're going to be that confused, you know? And I, I think, I think that's, what's great about it. Is that, that IP is that it's kind of, it's besides it's, it's kind of open to everyone. They don't really, you don't really need to know a whole lot about it to, to get it, you know, and to get the themes and to get the characters. Thank you for that. I'm I'm curious because I've never I've never personally worked on something as big as that. And so I'm always wondering, is there is there like a writer's room meeting of like, all right, for that that random five percent that have never heard of magic before, <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have to cater to that. Luckily, no. Luckily, yeah. As I said, it's 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 a pretty easy world to get into. And so it, you know. Yeah. What kind of tools are you using? Are you using just spreadsheets and um we'll use spreadsheets which is my favorite type just kidding i don't like i spreadsheets <laughs> i was like really uh, um not for lots of text no. they're not great <laughs> yeah. nope um and then we use a program called artisy which mm. is a little bit i don't know if you guys have heard of that it's a little bit similar to like twine and things yeah and it's it's very much just a branching dialogue system so we we create conversations we create other things with 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 branching you know, nodes that have the lines in them and then they can branch depending on choices or depending on different things that happen with, with um, coding and things like that. And um, that's, that's where we do the majority of our writing. And then if we have like cinematics and stuff, we'll, I'll, we'll usually write them in script format. Sure. Just so that we can have that for the cinemat for the Cinemax people and the animators so that they can kind of get what's in our head a little bit better. Yeah. I bet. I mean, I, I'm sure you're really, using a lot of the skills that you learned in school. Oh yeah. Yeah. Practice that a lot. I know. So yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's been, that's been, that was really helpful. Like I, I, I wouldn't have gotten the job that I did with, without that. And it's, it, it prepared me a lot, you know, even you, just the, yeah, you oh, sorry. Uh, you'd taken Paul Larson's script writing classes, right? I hadn't. No, I never take, took oh. Paul Larson's class. I only took one script writing class in college and it was, um, oh man, I, I, I forgot his name. He's the head of film. Oh, Kevin. Uh, Hansen. Yeah, Kevin Hansen. I took one yeah. of his script writing classes, but that was all I ever took. But I always kind of loved writing scripts, so it kind of was always there for me. Yeah, I think your brain is movie. It is. It's weird. I don't. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> you, you and I are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. My friend. <laughs> well, um, I think as writers, we're just drawn to good narrative wherever mm -hmm. we find it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that for a really long time, the best narratives we were getting were in movies, you know? I mean, yep. we certainly were not getting great TV and, you know, I not that books were bad, but I don't know about you guys, but there was a time where like, I couldn't find something that I really just fell into mm -hmm. reading, but a movie, it's just such a more visceral thing, which I think is why it translates to our brains for games, because we want to be there, you know? Yep. Movies, movies compared to books, not as much, well, TV a little bit, uh, not as much TV, but with books, you know, they're visual, they're audio, they're everything. Mm -hmm. And then games has that one extra element, which just goes deeper with the interactivity. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it so, so, that's what so awesome about it and impactful. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think we're, we bring a lot of our own ideas to books. Mm -hmm. um, I have a book that I recommend all the time is what, what we see when we read it's mm -hmm. called but you know movies just do something i don't know they're all just different yeah. aren't we lucky yeah. that we get to live in a time when they're all there i think music yep. is like such a huge part of all of that and you, mm -hmm. unless you're picking a soundtrack for when you're reading a book it's a very different thing <laughs> yep yep uh kate you mentioned uh you wouldn't have the job you had without the experience in school i know a lot of students uh have questions about what should especially having just come out of school, what should a game writing portfolio look like? Um, could you speak to what yours was at, at the point that you had graduated and or got picked up by, by Avalanche? Sure. Um, well, 
for I, I, I was in the grad program and I was working on the thesis game. Um, and grad, the grad program is a little bit harder to do deeper narratives because the games are so are done in such a tight timeline with so little people. Um, and so what I what I what I kind of did there was I I wanted to tell a story in our game and I wanted it to have some sort of story weight and so I just I sat down and came up with story ideas came up with with ideas to kind of just as tell the story as best we could in the best way that we could in this quickest time I wrote scripts I wrote you know plenty of other th things just to kind of understand what we wanted and kind of try and get that across um, and then when the opportunity came I just I sent in some samples from those scripts as well as some samples from script, uh, of scripts I wrote I wrote previously and I, I they impressed my boss enough that he called me up <laughs> so it was and then obviously I've worked on a bunch of games and so that you know I, I don't I can't even remember how many I've worked on one two three a lot and mm -hmm. that 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 helped just knowing kind of the the nature of game development and how it works and obviously it's going to be a lot different in a, in a studio system and with 200 people instead of eight but I still under I still kind of understood how what it was like and and I think a, another thing that I think the program does great is just making you work with people like that's what game development is even in COVID times is working with people and talking to people and you know compromising and knowing how to to talk and work with people and that that's what the program did and prepared me for a lot was just I used to be a lot shyer than I am and grad school helped me with that and I think that's what helped me with my with my job to get my job is to actually be able to talk to people you know I agree with that you were a lot shyer and now you're I was yes and I just think that doing what you really are loving doing and and what you knew you wanted to do because there was a time I remember that you weren't I mean, and we say this all the time. It's like getting a job writing in games is still hard. Oh, yeah. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot more. We used to say nobody gets jobs as designers. And now it's the, you know, design. there are lots more design jobs, but they're not that many writer jobs. Mm -mm. They're just not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you mentioned uh, when I, I've talked to you about like my thoughts or, you know, like my what my future would have been in the industry. You know, I I'm not a coder. I can't code like. I can't do any of that. I, I, you know, I can't draw. <laughs> and so I, and so I was, I was worried about like what my future would be when I was in class. And I remember coming and talk to you and it was like, well, design and writing, I like those two things. And I focused on them in, in college and I focused them on grad school and I played games and I watched movies and I did different things to kind of learn more about just things I liked. And and it kind of just all worked out, I guess. <laughs> you know, what's really funny, Kate, is that I, you know, I've been doing this a long time mm -hmm. and I, and luckily I get to talk to people who have graduated and gone on. And even if they didn't end up in games, I always have people that say, oh, I, I just got really lucky. And I just got lucky to get my job. It didn't, mm -hmm. I actually have heard Adam say that when he was writing. <laughs> and, you know, I think that um, you have to be ready for luck. Mm -hmm. So you have to have done all the work, prepped yourself, know, yep. and, and know what opportunity looks like when it bites you in the butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's mm -hmm. luck. <laughs> yep. Exactly, exactly. And I guess I was lucky enough to have done that. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready. You yeah, were yeah. Ready. So, so excited. Uh, what is your, what is the writing pipeline at Avalanche look like? Um, we had spoken a little bit before. Well, actually, let's let's do this a two-part question because sure. uh, we were talking about a little bit before uh, the podcast started. Um, what are you doing on like a day-to-day -day basis? Like what kind of writing are you doing? Um, and then the second part of that is how does that pipeline work? Are you doing it solo? Are there review check-ins? Things like that. Uh, so over the two years that I've been there, I've kind of jumped around a bit. Um, and right now I'm mainly focusing on quests and missions, writing for those, um, writing cinematics that need to be in those. Um, and that's, that's, that's my, most of my day is, is doing that. But I also focus, I'm a little, I kind of do a lot of the more technical stuff with Artisy, our program, um, whether it's, um, exporting scripts for recording or, um, changing, you know, values and things to, to indicate to, to us and to the other, uh, to others when things get recorded, when things are ready to be recorded, we have a pretty, 
we have a, a big game and a lot of a lot of freaking lines and so i, I we, we have to we have to stay pretty diligent on um tracking what was what we've recorded what's been reviewed what hasn't been reviewed things like that um and then I, I i work a bit with cinematics before before the whole covid thing i i was the kind of like story representative for them and i've kind of moved away from that as things have gotten busier but um but uh to answer your question adam about our pipeline we so back when the game was uh, you know more in its infancy we kind of started with pitching ideas for things getting those approved getting the right getting like basic writing into the system, you know, just simple things so that the implementers could hook up, hook up the writing and make it all work. Um, and then we'd review those and then rewrite them with reviews, try to get them better, better, do some more reviews, get them better and better and um, change if there's any design changes, anything like that. And then once we feel we're fully confident with what we have, we'll bring them to the a final review with, um, like the heads of, and we'll kind of table read through it, make sure it sounds okay, do one final pass to fix anything. And then if it's good, we'll pass it along to our tone reviewer. She'll tone review it, make sure it has that British kick to it. And then um, and then they'll lock it. And if, if everything's good, if everything uh, goes the way it, we hope it does, we'll send it off to, to our re recording session to have the, the actors record it and, and then it's done. But that's usually how it goes for like more of the gameplay writing. So for things like with cinematics that need a lot more time, that need um, you know actual you know the animators and the cinematics people to work on them, we'll usually I'll usually I'll just write out a script of the cinematic, uh, review it with my writing directors, uh, go back and forth, make you know check everything, see you know once and then once they approve it, I'll send that off to. Cinematics people, or excuse me, I'll have that be tone reviewed, and then I'll send it off to the cinematics people, and they'll start their work on it, and then you know we'll kind of get, get see those those their work on the animations on the cinematics. We'll give feedback, and then once that's done, at least once they do the mocap for that, we'll we'll then bring the lines to do ADR, so that they can you know record the lines over the the voice mm -hmm. right. or over the mocap to make sure it all fits. The tone you, review sounds interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's how we got got to make sure it sounds British. Right. I think they should hire me at CD um, at CD Project Red to do that. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure it sounds Polish. Yeah. No, I'm American. I'm really good American. I can do that. Wouldn't that be an awesome job for CD? <laughs> um, Kate, are you using with the cinematics? You mentioned artistry with the the branching dialogue and things like that. With the cinematics, are you using Final Draft or Drama Queen or something like that? Um, so I don't, I, I use final draft for my, for my normal writing, like my normal script writing, but at, at work on my work computer, I just use word because word okay. has a word has a script format yeah. and it's, it's easier for me to get it than have to go get all the final draft stuff. Um, but I prefer final draft easily words, f word script writing thing is kind of crappy. <laughs> I recently but, uh, discovered one drama queen. It's like an open source final mm -hmm. draft, and I actually like it more than final draft. Really? Okay, yeah. I'll have to I'll have to check that out. I'm going to write that name down. Artisy is interesting. Um, we have talked to that company before, um, but we just don't teach enough um, writing classes mm -hmm. to make it a, a site license make sense. So, but that's interesting. I that that's good to know. Maybe we'll have to revisit that. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a good program overall. It has its it has its quirks. It can mm -hmm. be it can get it can have it has some annoying things and some things that kind of you have to get used to. But once you kind of understand it and understand the way it works, it it works. It does its job. Mm -hmm. It does its job pretty well. Mm -hmm. Have you written any quests that you really just are super proud of? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm proud of everything I work on, thankfully. Um, I'm glad to hear that. Um, and I, 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 I can't rare say- That's too. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't say anything about them, obviously. But, no, of course not. But no. um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for people to get a hold of them and to play them. And, you know, I'm, I'm, and it, I'm, I'm excited to just see them when they're done, you know? And then yeah. and it's so exciting. I can't stress how exciting it is to just hear your lines that you wrote to be, be read by an actor. Like, yeah. it's- it's it's so awesome and it's you know it's just really really cool 
And I can't stress how how good that feels when you when you when you when you see that or hear that. Well, let's do this. Let's have a, a part two of this in a year or two years or whatever. <laughs> sure. And, and we'll we'll play through some of the quests. Okay that you wrote sure and so that we can experience them like in their entirety that'd be great i love it Th that would be so fun i would mm -hmm. love that so much we've also been thinking about um inviting people to come and play their student games oh uh, yeah been in the industry for a little while so <laughs> sure i'd love to adam and i have lots of ideas for this so we're gonna well, do forever like writers this... we have lots of ideas <laughs> <laughs> right. let's hope this pandemic's gone soon and we can and they can all be in person Yes. Yeah. That would be super fun. Actually couch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep on the mm -hmm. couch. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so one of the students was asking, it's kind of funny. We had these back-to-back -back questions of, uh, is it frustrating when story elements change after you've already finished your writing? Um, it sounds like what you've talked about. It sounds like the process is pretty ironed there and pretty, pretty solid. Uh, action is maybe making you think differently. <laughs> things change. That's, that's, that's how storytelling goes and that's how make it create creativity goes especially when it's not if it was like if it was just me making this that's a little bit different because you know i have my vision but and even even when it isn't just me it, even if it was you know books you know like an author they're going to have to edit things they're going to have to change things and that's that's what happens and it can be frustrating it can but um i i, I always like to think of it as it's going to make a better product because i i trust I, I believe in and trust the, the designers and I believe in and trust everybody who want things to change for the, but it's all for the benefit of the game and it's frustrating, but sometimes you just got to say, well, if it makes the game better, oh, well, I think and that's usually it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the gig. I, mm -hmm. we, I always tell students who want to, you know, they, they want to be write this grand story and have nobody change anything this happens in capstone all the time and it's like write a, not, write a book this job. Yep. That's not this job. <laughs> yep. yeah. go and, home and write your great american novel yep yeah, yep yeah, do if you want it to stay the way you want it make your own thing yeah. you can't do it with other people mm -hmm. and you know games games can change so much mm -hmm. you know games are in development for you know they used to be in development for you know six months a little bit longer than that back in the day now they're in development for so long like I was I was I was looking I was doing some cyberpunk research and that game was announced in 2012 I know. and it hasn't even come out yet Isn't that and crazy? it's just and so throughout those years you know the whether it's five years or ten years the game's going to change you're going it's it's not going to remain I know I remember I don't remember who it was but in in class at the U they would always say you know the game starts as one thing it ends as another thing mm -hmm. you know your game's not going to be your original vision it's going to be different and that's, that's that's inevitable that's a little game and a big game right mm -hmm. it doesn't matter it's you know if mm -hmm. you if you think it's going to be what it's what you pitch mm -hmm. you're going to be sad <laughs> in the long yep run. <laughs> yep and you just kind of have to realize that's a you know that's inevitable and just mm -hmm. go along with it and do what's best for the game that's kind of the takeaway there is just just do what's best for the game yeah I, I think, you know i think that that actually makes it so you don't really fight with writer's block um you know because we talk about writer's block all the time but it because you have so many different angles to come at mm -hmm. things it's you're you're constantly working through stuff in a different way it's not like yep. i have to come up with this thing all by myself because you're usually working with a bunch of other people too yeah, and that's that's what's great with working with the team. I don't know about other studios. I don't know about other writers, but it's great to be able to just like, I'm having a hard time with this. Can I talk to you? We can go over this. We can pass ideas around and you know figure it all out and come up with something that works. And you know that's that you can do that with designers. You can do that with other writers, and it's always helpful just having another you know having this team with you to help you along. One well, to what you said earlier, I like. That's awesome to hear you say that, like, you know, this is for the betterment of the game and everything like that. Because I don't know if either of you two know, but writers are often known for having a little bit of an ego um, and a little <laughs> bit of a God complex. And uh, in my experience in games, that can also be the case where it really is like, this is my, my thing. Um, so to hear, to hear you say, like, you know, we're all in this together, make it, like, that's such a, I wish more people, not just writers, I wish more game developers just in general would have that perspective because if that was the case, th there would be a better product at the end mm -hmm. of it, if well, everyone I, had that. 
thought. I, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I, I feel like there's a big difference between being a production artist and a fine artist, right? Fine mm -hmm. art is about your own vision. Production artist is like a graphic designer. It's like you're, you know, doing this other stuff. And so when you're writing for games, you are the production person. You're not the fine artist person. So unless you want to make your own game and yep. then you can make Stardew Valley, which is a delight. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yep. You gotta, you gotta be a team player. That's, that's the biggest thing is you gotta work with, figure out how to work with people or you're not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or don't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like I mentioned, this is, you know, we're doing these podcasts now and we've been meeting, you know, talking to lots of other people and everybody says that over mm -hmm. and over and over again. It's not just the producers. It's, it's, you know, from the yeah. senior, um, uh, programmers to the tech artists to the it's all about communication like if you cannot communicate you're not going to be successful in this and I that's one of the things I always yep. try to really talk about with my freshman students because they have a, a very different idea about what games are mm -hmm. hopefully by the time they've listened to all of these they will know <laughs> yeah yeah and communication is so important because as a writer, you got to be able to explain what you're trying to do, what you want to do. And, and sometimes people don't get that, you know, you have to be able to explain that clearly enough to understand to people who have different minds than you do. Cause you know, some, some people are programmers. They don't have as much of a creative mind as a writer would. And you have to be able to talk to people and help them understand what you're trying to do and vice versa as well. I remember the very first time that I wrote a document and then a a uh, programmer came back with a thing and I was like, this isn't what I wrote. And he was like, no, it's exactly what you wrote. And then I was like, oh no, I described it totally wrong. Yep. Yep. Um, Kate, what are your, what are your favorite things to write? But as far as game writing, like what are your favorite things to write and what are your least favorite things to write? I love writing cinematics. So as I, again, as I come from a film, I just like screenwriting and I think that's where I can, I, I've able to let loose the most and I can kind of, I, I just love that. I just think it's a f just fun to write that way. And that's always, that's always my favorite thing. Um, and, and then least favorite, um, I mean, it's, there can be some hard, you know, having to explain game mechanics and design or game mechanics in story, like to have a game mechanic make sense with a narrative and to explain it is so hard. That like, is hard. <laughs> like, it is so difficult. Um, like, I, I, ugh. um, and then we, we, we do things like here, we do things called generic scripts, which are like scripts for gameplay lines that kind of just will play randomly or when things happen in game. And so, for instance, like, let's say we have to have a line for a character to say hello when that, when the main character walks past. We'll have to write five different versions to, of hello for 15 different characters. And then we will have to do 300 lines of these generic lines for one character, you know, just for these little things that could happen, whether it's you hit them with something or you walk past them or you anything. And that, that while that can be fun and, and creatively rewarding, cause you have to like really think about it and, you know, come up with these perfect little, you know, brief lines, but it can also be pretty frustrating in terms of just like, how do I write hello five more times? <laughs> or how do I say, you know, goodbye in a different way that's not goodbye or, you know, the five other times I've written it. And that can be frustrating, but it's also, I think it's good to get your creative juices going, you know, because you really got to think about it. That's hilarious. I'm just thinking <laughs> of Animal Crossing right now and how many times they've told me to go talk to Isabel, even though I've been playing that game for three years. I can't even imagine Animal Crossing how how much writing there has to be done with that. Like, yeah, with a game that can go on forever. <laughs> uh, speaking of cyberpunk, did you guys see the the tweet of the the cyberpunk translation script? Yes, I didn't. No, it is it is a table that has six or seven stacks of paper, paper each of which is like two feet tall. Oh wow! It is. They just took a picture of all of their Japanese translations of the script. It was cool. And the dude standing behind it is just like, you can just see the like soul that's drained from yeah. his face. Well, I, you know, I, I worry about them. I mean, crunch, man. It's, yeah. it's a thing. 
I, I hope you're not having to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I have a pretty good work-life balance, I think. And, and, you know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm able to get stuff done and I don't feel like I ever have to overwork really. I feel um, like we all live at our desks anyway now. Yeah. Like, and I mean, the TV. I mean, it's like back when we were at the office, I would, you know, leave at six. And then if somebody messaged me, I would be like, oh, I've already left. I'll have to get it in the morning. But now I can just be like, oh yeah, let me go do that real quick. Mm -hmm. And it's not bad or anything. It's like, it's, it's just, it's what life is now, I guess. That happens to me. I, I, ha I have a discord for my students. Whoa, that was a, <laughs> I like being available sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I, I have a, a, it's, it's the, it's possibly the last question of the podcast, but it's the last question on the list, but it's uniquely suited to you. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Is there a game and you could take this a couple different ways. Is there a game that you think would be better adapted as a film? And I think they could be, I think they could be asking, is there a game that hasn't been adapted as a film that should be, or they might be asking, is there a story of a game that that game actually would have been a better film than it would have been a game? Hmm. That's, 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 that's a good question. That's, that's a hard question. That's why I saved it for the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> a game, a, a game, uh, a game that would be better as a movie. Um, I know. I, I don't know. Answer yeah. that question I don't... before we got the, witcher tv series yeah yeah uh, I mean, it's good game but i'm really enjoying henry cavill <laughs> who doesn't oh man that's that's hard like i i uh, my mind's drawing a blank right now um mine is too for, yeah for like, whatever it's worth like do you think there's a, is there a game that you think should be made into a movie well, you know, that's an interesting, interesting question because a lot of, you know, a lot of people will be like, games should never be movies. Mm, I don't you know, remember. movies, should, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I like having that kind of, because I, I think games have a lot of great, you know, characters and stories in there. And I'd like to those get to an expanded audience, you know, through films. And what I, what I think games need to try and do, and I think they've been, they're trying to do this, like with the Uncharted movie and they yeah. kind of the Assassin's Creed movie, but that didn't go that well. Yeah. But where they're trying to expand the world instead mm -hmm. of just being i'm going to make an adaptation of this game they're trying to make it so it sits there with the with the story of the game but a new story and i think that works better with introducing people to it because it starts with a clean slate yeah but it still feels as if it's part of the world and it's bringing it together you know you know bringing it together um that's what i think if game movies should be doing that's what i think and they are it seems like hopefully and it, that's what i think they should be doing now and mm -hmm um well and then look at like movie games right like the one that you're working on for instance yep. or, or book games um i'm 100 on, on board with that i mean i'm a sucker for world, world building mm -hmm. uh and so i'd rather much see three stories set in the same universe rather than the same story three times like absolutely. oh yeah oh yeah and like you know i was playing uh jedi fallen order and i'm like i'm much happier that this is a new story than just retell it's just gonna tell the force awakens or whatever you know yes, yes. i just like having I like being in that world, but I like having new stories than what I just saw. And I really like the Lego Harry Potter. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, the Lego is an exception. Lego is definitely an it, exception. They are. <laughs> yeah. Lego is definitely an exception. Yes. Um, I'm still trying to think about your your question. It's okay. About what could be in a movie? <laughs> well, how about um, this? Because this will be there will probably be at least a little bit of time until this goes mm -hmm. up live or goes up. And so, if you think of it in between then and now. Uh, I can put it in the yeah, text okay, and then okay. we'll have text <laughs> up on yeah. the bottom right now and everyone else is reading it right now and we're having no idea so. <laughs> that's awesome yeah so well oh I, I just thought of one okay I just thought of one yeah okay um I really think Metal Gear is the perfect mm -hmm. for a movie uh-huh and they they supposedly are making a movie of Metal Gear which I don't think that'll ever happen but uh I think that that series is so cinematic and um, movie referential mm -hmm. that I think they could, if they did it right, I think they could make a great Metal Gear movie. It'd be freaking weird. Like it'd be insane. But if the, if they could do it right, I think they could do it, but I don't ever think they will be able to do it. <laughs> well, that, that, yeah. 
I like but that. it would I'd like to see it I would like to see it and any other you know I love horror and so any horror game I would like to see as a movie just because I think it's interesting just taking those stories like I'm really interested in the new Resident Evil movie they're making I'm really interested in all that stuff and I think horror games can translate well to movies as well because I, you know, I agree I think that the yeah. narrative arc in horror if it's really really well with games mm -hmm. or vice versa so yeah. I mean, look yeah. at Silent Hill, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so we are running out of time, but I, we always like to end with this question is um, it's <laughs> what would, if you could go back in time and give yourself advice about getting into the game industry, or if you were um, giving advice to someone who wants to get into the game industry, what would you say? I think I would say, put yourself out there. I think try and be as, you know, don't be afraid of being sociable. Don't be afraid of talking and interacting and working with people, you know, because I, as I said, I, w I was always pretty shy and I didn't, I didn't like to talk with people and, you know, put myself out there. And, but once I entered, you know, grad school and had to do that, I, I learned that it's essential for just basic development of social skills. And, but also just in the games, you know, being here, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without that because that that really taught me how to work with people and how to not sh you know give my show my ideas show what I what I think is what I would like to do what I think is right for the project and it and without that I wouldn't without me trying that I wouldn't have been able to do any of this I wouldn't have been able to you know put, throw myself forward and get the jobs that I have now or interact with any of the people I'm working with you know and I think just putting yourself out there and even if you're afraid to, to, to be outgoing, to put yourself out there, just do it and you, it gets easier. It does. Mm -hmm. I love that piece of advice because we have a I lot like of people answer, who are yeah. introverted and mm -hmm. it's hard. It's, it is hard. We, it those of us who are it, not introverted, introverted game developers and introverted writers, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it can make life really hard and and not just in work, in anything. Mm -hmm. And but once you get past that, like that barrier of being nervous or worried, it makes everything easier. Yeah. Yes. Says the extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. It was so 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 nice to see you. Thank so you great to see you guys again, and thank you for bringing me on. It was awesome. Yes, and we'll do Thanks. round two. Promise. Fantastic. Love to. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.